Hello and welcome to another episode of Humans in Five. Let's paint you a picture. You've stubbed your toe and you're alone at home. You hop around, maybe you say some pretty salty words to express your pain. You might even let out a couple of shouts. Here's a different picture. You're tired, you've had a really rough day at work or school, and you're just feeling really low. Maybe you switch on some Coldplay, flick through some pictures of happier times, and you have a good long cry. In both of these situations, you're expressing pain, letting the world know that you're distressed in some way. Your pain is happening for different reasons and your reactions are different, but either way you, and anyone with you in that moment, can recognize that you're in pain. This recognition of pain inspired a group of researchers from America and Europe to compare how humans could judge expressions of pain or distress in humans and some other closely related species, namely bonobos and chimpanzees. Taylor Kelly and colleagues set up their study with the assumption that although our genetic closeness would mean humans would have a pretty good understanding of distress calls in bonobo and chimpanzee infants, we'd be particularly well-tuned to the calls of human infants. But as we know, not all calls are the same. The sounds we make when we're tired or hungry are different to the sounds we make when we're scared or in really sharp pain. To test these reactions between calls and species, the research team presented human adults with a variety of different recordings. They recorded human infants in two settings, when they were having a bath and when they were getting a vaccine. They also recorded a range of chimpanzee and bonobo infant distress calls in a number of zoos across the world. These calls covered everything from begging their mothers for some extra food to calling out to be picked up when they were in an aggressive situation. These calls were analyzed for differences in pitch and shape of the sound made by infants, when it reduced in volume and when they modulated their pitch. The study team compared these acoustic analyses to the cries of different infants and how they were perceived by adults. There were 21 adult listeners, all with previous experience listening to infants, but none of them had any experience listening to little bonobos or chimpanzees. The adult listeners continuously rated bonobo infants as being in more distress, even when the calls were from low stress situations. This was because bonobo infants have an overall high pitched distress call, which as humans, we're used to hearing when people scream with fear or pain. On the flip side, the listeners thought chimpanzees were overall not in high stress situations due to how low pitched their distress calls were. They had no issue telling the difference between bath time and vaccines for human babies, but the influence of pitch levels from their exposure to human infants colored how they perceived distress even in our closest primate relatives. This study shows us that whilst we share a lot with bonobos and chimpanzees, there are some things that we have kept a pretty unique element to when it comes to being members of Homo sapiens. It doesn't mean that we're clueless about what's happening with other primate babies. We just don't make as good a parent as a chimpanzee or a bonobo does. We hope this doesn't have you getting too distressed and we'll see you next time on Humans in Five. And don't forget to subscribe.